The shoulders are not straight across, but they slant, and the sleeve cap is a curve. Patterns usually have you shape these lines by binding off in steps. The directions say bind off five stitches at the beginning of the next six rows, for example. And if you do bind off in steps here, you end up with edges that are plain nasty to sew together. I mean, they're bumpy and lumpy, and you almost never can sew these into a good looking seam. Fortunately, there is a very fine alternative to this, and it is called short row or partial knitting. Here's the opposite diagonal. Now, short rows are literally that rows that are shorter than the ones that are above them or below them. In order to accomplish this little diagonal across here where we have live stitches, we knit to there, turn around and come back, knit back to around there. Again, shorter rows, progressively shorter rows. The only thing that's different about short rows or that's tricky about it is you have to do a little bit of fancy footwork at each of these places where you turn around to close up any holes or gaps that you may have. We're going to start with the right-leaning diagonal. Goes from the bottom left to the upper right, and we're going to work it on the right side of the fabric. I have 16 stitches on this little swatch. Let's say my pattern told me to bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next four rows at this edge. Instead, I have knit to those last four stitches or my turning point. Each one of those bind offs becomes, defines a turning point. I stop, I slip the next stitch to the right hand needle, bring the yarn around, slip that stitch back, take the yarn to the back and turn the work. Now notice that the yarn is ready for me to purl again slip that very first stitch and purl all the way back to the end of the row. When you've completed that at every step you end up with this. A nice little diagonal piece of knitting except you have these little wraps. We have to do one last row to eliminate those wraps. You do that by knitting regularly to the wrapped stitch When you get to that wrap, insert the needle into it, insert it into the regular stitch, knit the two together, and pull them off. Again, all the way across the row, and you will have finished your right-leaning slant. For this left leaning slant, we'll work it from the purl side and you purl to your first turning point. Again, stop, slip that stitch, take the yarn around. This is actually the same process, you're just doing it from the opposite side. Turn your work, take, to the, yarn, take the yarn to the back because you're going to knit, slip that first stitch, knit back, and you repeat that process for all the turning points and when you're finished, you end up with this. This time when our wraps are completed, we're working from the purl side. Again, we work to the wrap stitch and we have to somehow give a last row that's going to eliminate those wraps. Four. Here's our wrap. This time we lift it from the back loop of it onto the needle and just purl those two together again. Here's our wrap. We lift the back loop onto the needle, purl those two together. That wrap automatically falls behind. And you do that all the way across and you're left with a nice diagonal piece of knitting with live stitches. Here are some of the places you would use this technique. For a shoulder, put the stitches on a holder or double pointed needle to save for later when you can knit the shoulders together just as we did for the drop shoulder style. For a scoop neck or a sleeve cap, just bind off regularly and you'll pick it up or put it into a seam later.